Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will share five tips to get you started with coding. These concepts I have learned over the past five years using different languages and creating different projects. So I will be sharing in detail the things that you should start with and the things you should avoid. So without further ado, let's get started. So the very first thing I will tell you is to skip the formalities. And what do I mean by formalities? Now the thing is that when you are starting new, it doesn't matter which programming language you are using, you will be bombarded with a lot of information. This information, it will depend on how difficult the language is, but still you will have a lot of information coming in that might be overwhelming. So what you have to do is you have to stick to the basics and you have to try to solve a problem as soon as you can. If you get into the formalities and you dive in deep, you will lose the will to actually program and solve a problem. So in other words, what you can do is you can learn how to code even though it's not the best and the most efficient way of doing it. So once you know the basics, then you can go ahead and try on some advanced techniques and you can improve your code because you are not aiming for professionalism right from the start. So you have have to start from the basics and then you have to build up to get more advanced as you go along. So the main difference between an amateur or a beginner and an expert is the level of details. That That is true pretty much in every field. So at the end of the day, you will be improvising or you will be adding on these small, small things as you go along when you convert from being a beginner to an intermediate to an expert. So the idea is that you keep learning the basics and try to learn them as soon as possible. Skip the formalities. If it works, it works. Just try to go along with it. And later on, you can learn the best possible ways to approach a problem. So there will be always someone who knows better than you. So this is something that you have to live with. Now, one of the biggest problems with beginners is that they always have this in their head that we are not capable enough to actually write a code that will solve a problem somewhere. So are we good enough? Have we reached that threshold where we can actually code and make money or be a freelancer or get a job um, in a software development firm or whatever they want? Now, the thing is that all of this is in your head. There is no threshold where you will jump and you will become a developer. So all you have to do is you have to practice. Now, even when you practice, there will be always someone who knows better than you. So all of this uh, theory of not being good enough is just in your head. So what is the solution? You take all of this garbage from your head and you throw it away. The same way that your teacher threw you away of that class when you made that silly sound, right? So just throw it away and focus on developing new projects and solving some problems let me give you an example now i said that there's always someone who knows better than you right now one of the biggest minds of our era or the era before us was einstein and even einstein he said that e equals mc squared is good but again it cannot be implemented at least for now and well what do you know someone came up with the solution and they converted mass into energy and he was shocked so the idea is that no matter how smart you are or how good you are, there will always be someone who knows better than you. So don't try to shy away from this, that I'm not good enough, I'm not capable enough of actually writing some code. Again, if the code works and it performs the task, then it's good enough. So don't try to overthink everything. Just try to focus on the solution. And if you are able to find it, that is good enough. So the next step is to create projects projects and projects so one of the most important things when you're learning a language is to build projects and the reason for that is that you want to get the the sense of accomplishment as soon as you learn something so things like algebra or basic maths when you learn that and you are not able to apply it anywhere you don't feel a sense of accomplishment from them but things like programming for example creating a game creating an app creating a website things like this they give you instant gratification so this is a very interesting concept that somebody shared it on um, one of their videos. I, I can't remember the name of the guy. If I do, I will put it in the description. Now, this guy, he mentioned that our generation is basically addicted or hooked to instant gratification. So whatever we want, we want it now. Whether it's food, we want, to, we want it delivered right away. We don't want to cook, we want it delivered right away. Whether it's a game, if we want to purchase, we will go online, we will download it, we will purchase it, we will pay by card right away. Everything will happen uh, at the snap of a finger. 
right so everything is happening really really fast so things that took days before now they take seconds if i wanted to travel for let's say from london to dubai i don't have to wait for days to actually travel on horses or something like that or even drive i can simply take a plane and in a few hours i will be there right so the idea is that even with our phones we get instant gratification whatever we need whatever we want to see what is happening in us what is happening in london what is happening in australia wherever you want the information from you get it instantly right away so this mindset is already stored in our heads and this thing we can't take it out no matter what you do you can't really take it out at this point at least so the idea is that whenever you are creating, uh, whenever you're learning a new language, create a project right away. So start with the basics, learn the few basic simple uh, examples like if statement, for loops, while loops and switches, whatever uh, the basics are, you just learn them and you go right away, you jump into your project. Otherwise, you will lose the will to actually go through with uh, the coding process and creating new projects. And at the end of the day, you are basically creating an archive of your projects. And to be honest, projects are basically derivatives of other projects so th there is no such project that is 100 percent unique so you are creating a project out of another project so what you have to do is you have to build up your uh, cv or your portfolio by creating lots of different projects that you can use later on as well so the best way to learn language is to create different projects and there is a concept of default projects as well so some people like to code some specific projects for example a uh, task manager for example uh, let's say a twitter clone or a facebook clone so whenever they are learning a new language they will try to replicate that uh, in order to see what the language has to offer what kind of syntax it has and what are the capabilities of this language the next tip is that don't try to reinvent the wheel now, this is a big problem that a lot of people try to do. The idea of learning new stuff is excellent. It's, it's very vital to learning new languages. But the thing is that you should know where to stop and not to reinvent the wheel. So you don't want to write everything from scratch. So a good example of uh, this is using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. When you're building a website, now if you start writing the complete code of HTML and CSS, then that will take up a lot of time. So what you have to do is you have to see what other people have done. So there will be navigation bars, there will be drop down menus, there will be buttons, rounded buttons, uh, square buttons. So all of these things will be available to you. And what you have to do is you have to utilize these codes in your project. As I've mentioned before, most of the projects, pretty much every project you make is a derivative of another project. So you have to find out what part of the code is relevant to my project and then you have to add it to your project. Now, if you start writing the code step by step, right from the scratch, that will be a waste of time since there is already a solution for it. So the best way to approach this is to see which libraries or which packages are available so you can get open source code and there will be a lot of them which are under uh, Creative Commons license, some of them are at MIT license and what you have to do is when you are utilizing someone else's code, you are not actually copying it because it is under a license, what you are doing is you are accrediting the author uh, or the programmer or the developer and then you are using that code and you're mentioning them in your own license. I'm not actually a legal advisor, but this is a very basic thing that you should know that if you are using someone else's code, it's completely fine as long as you follow the steps that they have mentioned. Most of the times code is either open source or it's MIT license or it is under um, LGPL license. So there's a lot of different licenses that allow you to take different code and add it to your project. And there is nothing wrong about that. Unless you want to build everything from scratch and create a completely different environment and a completely different uh, type of project, which is very, very, very rare. And it is hardly something a beginner would ever do. So you should stick to different projects, different resources. Uh, these are sometimes called packages, libraries, whatever you want to call. Maybe sometimes they're called scripts. So whatever they are called, just try to find some part of code that you can reuse in your own project that somebody else has given you permission to actually use it. So that is a very, very easy thing to do that will put you on fast track to the coding express. So the last tip I have to share is pick a lane. Now it sounds very simple, but in reality, it's really complicated. So what does that mean? Pick a lane. The thing is that sometimes when we go to a store and we see uh, different lanes, and we have to pick one of these lanes and while we are deciding between which lane to pick both of the lanes actually keep growing and growing 
so there are people getting behind each lane and before you know it the lanes they are so big now that it even goes out of the store so the idea here is that you have to start somewhere so you have to decide on a language the biggest issue with beginners is where to start and which language to pick now the thing is that if you keep going back and forth between different languages you will not be able to properly understand the fundamentals now the idea behind any language is to understand the basic fundamentals once you understand the fundamentals learning a new language should not take you more than a few weeks and you should be able to create the same projects that you have uh, done in for example language one you can replicate the same ones in language two so at the core you have to understand the basic principles of programming and it's not dependent on the language so how can you pick a language so this is the question so my suggestion is that Go and research on what do you want to build. Are you going to build apps? Are you going to build websites? Are you going to build desktop applications? What is it that you are looking for? And there will be an easy language in that uh, area and there will be a difficult language or a widely used language and you can see the pros and cons for each language. So my suggestion is that you start off with an easy language even if it's not the most widely used one you should start off with an easy language so that you can focus on the real thing which is understanding the concepts so you need to know how loops works you need to know how operators work how the functions work what is object oriented programming so all of these things will add up if you have a lot of syntax to work along with so try to pick up a language that has a very simple syntax that is easy to learn even though it does not have have a lot of applications with it but again you have to pick a project along with it so don't just learn a language for the sake of learning the language you have to pick a project so for example you have to create a organization tool you want to organize your life you want to add what time should I schedule my appointments what time should I read a book what time I should go for the gym so all of this you have to put it in an app which gives you notifications and which alerts you and whatnot so try to add a project that you want to build before you start learning the language and direct yourself towards that end goal that is your project so this way you will be really enthusiastic about completing that project and while completing that project you will be able to learn that language as well and again whatever language you are using at the end of the day it's like a communication protocol so like you have uh, different languages like english french or the whatever language you have there are means to translate between each other so at the end of the day humans they communicate with each other with the basic principles the same way you are communicating with the machine with the same basic principles all you have to do is you have to learn the new syntax so once you know how the machine understands things then you can easily learn the syntax and you can shift between different languages whenever you want so don't try to restrict yourself in this fast era of technology with one language so try to understand the basic principles so don't say that I'm a Java developer I'm C sharp developer I'm Python developer no don't say that you have to be a developer right so what language is a different story so you should be able to write programs in every other language whether it's PHP for a website whether it's Python for data science or whether it's Java for gaming doesn't matter you should be able to apply the same principles everywhere so that is the basic and the most important thing that you should focus on so in summary the first thing skip the formalities try to focus on what is important in terms of creating a simple project don't try to get uh, don't try to be a perfectionist and try don't try to become the best and perfect coder right at the beginning second thing there will always be someone who knows better than you so don't try to get that in your head that I'm not good enough to actually be a programmer or a coder so just get started try to solve a problem and if you can solve that problem it means you are good enough Third thing is projects, projects, and projects. Create projects, don't just learn for the sake of language. Try to create as much projects as you can and try your best to actually archive them somewhere online or on a CV or create a separate portfolio. Do something to put it all together in one place so you can see your accomplishments. Fourth thing is don't reinvent the wheel. Try to use the code of other people who have given permission to actually use their code. All you have to do is you have to add them to your license and then you can use their code. And this is what the open source community is all about. Everyone wants to help each other create new projects. The last thing is to pick a lane. Make sure you pick a lane and stick with it 
at least for a while until you learn the basics. Once you have the basics, then you can move along to any language and try to replicate any project that you have in mind. So these were the tips that I've learned over the years on how to start programming and learn different languages. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.